Hey everyone, Tristan back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing my cast iron pan and pot collection. As you can see, this is pretty much everything here. Some of these are vintage and some of these are items that you can get today. But I just really like cast iron. Um, it works on any kind of stove pretty much, whether it be any kind of electric stove or an induction stove, it can work on gas stoves. And it even works on an open flame, like if you're camping and stuff like that. Furthermore, the cast iron stuff can actually be put in the oven too, which is great for, let's say you want to sear a steak on your stove and then uh, do the final cook in your oven. You can put the whole cast iron pan in your oven. Or let's say you're making cornbread or something like that. Uh, you can, you know, the, the, whole, the whole cast iron thing can go in your oven. So it's really very versatile. And also it can be non-stick as well if, if, you use, if you use enough oil or butter while you're cooking. So you can even fry an egg and stuff like that. And it'd be, it'd be completely non-stick. So for many years, I had pretty much stainless steel and, and non-stick like Teflon pans. And at a certain point, maybe 15 years ago or something, I decided that I didn't want to have any Teflon in my cookware or anything like that. So I decided to go cast iron. And what I first started with was a lodge, I believe it was a 12 inch pan. That's kind of similar to this one right here. It was like this size. This one's not lodge. This one is actually made by um, Griswold. You can see right here, this is like a um, antique, you know, vintage Griswold. But I started with a lodge that was this size. And that's one of the current ones that you can get now. But the thing I found was that it was really very heavy because um, the lodge ones tend to be a little bit thicker and heavier. So the heft of that was kind of a pain to use. And that's what kind of started me on the path of investigating vintage cast iron cookware um, because the vintage ones, such as this Griswold here, um, tend to be a lot lighter than the current lodge you know, cast iron. So, and they also have a smooth cook surface as well. Um, so that kind of led me down that path. Now I do have some lodge pieces here, which we'll talk about in this video. And also any of the lodge stuff here, I will post links to as well, because you can actually buy them on Amazon and stuff like that. But of course the vintage ones, you will have to search on eBay for, or tag sales or antique shops. And because they don't make them anymore, they do tend to be a little bit expensive. And then the other thing is, as you're watching this video, if anybody knows the year of any of these, um, I'm not a cast iron expert or anything like that, please leave a comment, because I would really like to know. Like when you're looking at the back, some people may be, a, a, be able to identify the year um, that uh, these were made. But these vintage pieces I either got on eBay or I found uh, tag sales pretty much over the years. And uh, once I have them, there's no reason to you know, get rid of them. They'll last me a lifetime. And then also one thing is when you're looking at the used vintage cast iron, one thing to check for is to make sure that they're not warped. And uh, so you wanna put it on a table, like flat, like you know, on the table and make sure it doesn't wobble, like on a flat table. And another thing is you can get a credit card and you can put it in here and just run it on the surface and make sure, you know, check it and make sure it's level. So, um, cause that is a common problem with the vintage ones. So let's get right into it in terms of the collection. So as you have been seeing, this is a number 10 Griswold and uh, it's not in the best shape, but it works for me. Also, I don't use this one very often cause it's pretty big. So, so yeah, this is the first piece and this is my largest uh, cast iron pan. And it, again, it's a Griswold number 10. And it's uh, got the 716A right there on the, on the bottom. And then I guess we'll go from largest size down to the smallest size. So my next smallest size down from that is going to be this one. And this one is a number eight, also a Griswold. And I think this one might be newer based on the, on the stamping on the bottom. But you can see it says Griswold number eight, Erie. PA USA and this is a 704A and this is a 10 inch pan and I do use, use this one pretty often this is a really good size I think this is a must-have size for pretty much anyone and as you're looking at this you might notice that the finish on my cast iron is not completely perfect you know some people are able to keep their seasoning on their cast iron completely perfect whereas mine you know tends to not be totally perfect or stuff like that and some of these could use some seasoning some additional oil or some additional seasoning i realize that but um, these work for me and i do season them occasionally and, I'll, and then i also do a maintenance season after each use as well and i'll talk about that um, later in this video but these are all like user pieces for me these aren't like display pieces like to hang on the wall or something 
I use each and every one of these. And really, I'm also the kind of person that doesn't believe in having more than I need. You know, there are a lot of people that are cast iron collectors in their real sense of the word, and they collect as much as they can find and just store them and stuff like that. I'm not like that at all. I don't believe in that. I just believe in having just as much as I need uh, to use. So I don't have any excess. I, every one of these pots and pans I actually use regularly. So again, this is the uh, number eight Griswold. And, I, and then I guess we'll do all the vintage pieces first. Now, this one also gets really a lot of uses. This is a number six Griswold. And um, I guess this one's about eight inches or something like that uh, in the diameter. And I use this one really a lot for making an omelet or you know an egg or two, um, things like that. Here's the back of this one. So it says number six, Griswold, Erie, Pennsylvania, and it says 699 here on the bottom. This is definitely one of my most used pans. Given its size and just ease of use, um, this is definitely one that I use uh, quite often. So those are the only vintage cast iron pieces that I have. And all the other ones are lodged and I was able to get those either locally at local cookware stores or even on Amazon. So let's go to this one here. This is, I believe, a 10 inch ribbed lodge cast iron. And just picking this up, I can feel that it's definitely heavier than the uh, vintage pieces. Let's show the back of this one. Lodge says um, 6.5 GP. I don't know exactly what that means, but this is from their current lineup. And uh, this is very nice for like if you want the little ridges on whatever you're cooking, like your meat or your fish. It's good for doing a burger where you get the little ridges on there. Um, it's also good for doing a steak if you want, or also chicken or fish. I don't use this one that often, but it's nice to have. And I think a few years ago I did do a video where I cooked something in this, so I'll try to post that in the top right as well. Um, but this is definitely a nice piece to have. Although this one can be kind of hard to clean, so you do want to get like a tool like this. Lodge makes this where it fits right in there. And like you have, let's say you're doing a burger or something, and after you're done, you've got these slots like filled with grease. Um, you can then just use this to clean it. You can scrape off the grease. It fits perfectly like that. So I'll post a link for all this stuff as well in the in the video. So this one does tend to be a bit of a pain to clean, um, but again, it's still nice to have. And then this red thing over here is also made by Lodge. It's also cast iron, but it's enamel cast iron, and that is a Dutch oven. So it's a nice size Dutch oven. I just use it like a pot, like when I'm making soup or uh, whatever. Um, I just use it just like any pot, and it's pretty heavy, so I won't pick it up. But um, that's a really nice piece um, that gets a fair amount of use. And as you can see right here on the edges of the lid, you do have the cast iron here that you can see, but it's enamelized. And this is also something that can go in the oven too. So whatever you're making, if it calls for putting something in a Dutch oven, um, that can go completely in the oven. So that's nice. And then right here I have something that I actually don't end up using a lot, but I did buy it just because I wanted to have it. It's a lodge, um, I don't even know what you call it, but it's like a presser thing. So like if you're making a sandwich or something like that, what you do is you can heat this up on your burner so it's a bit hot or warm. And then you can put this down on the sandwich and it'll kind of help compress it down. Actually, I think the technical term for these is like a bacon presser or something like that. And um, that's what a lot of people use these for if they're making bacon or something like that. They use this and they push, it, push this on the top of the bacon and it makes it flat. And this is definitely a sturdy piece. Um, I think I got this on Amazon, uh, but it's nice to have for that reason. And this is good for anything that you want to kind of press down while you're cooking. And it's also quite hefty as well. You know, a lot of these can actually probably be used as a weapon. And then I also have a large trowel. This is actually also something from the current lineup that you can probably find on Amazon. But I got this one at a yard sale. I think they said they only wanted like 85 cents for this or something. Um, it had a, when I first got it, it was a little bit more rusty and I did end up seizing it, but you can kind of see some of the rust is still shining through a little bit here, but it's not a big deal. And this is just used as a trial. Like if you're wanting to serve something on the dining room table, you can put this on the table and then you're not having to put the cast iron directly but it has other uses as well. Like, like if you have an induction cooktop, you can actually use this um, on top of the induction cooktop and then this will get hot. And then you can kind of put another pot on top of this to heat up using the induction uh, you know, cooktop and things like that. Um, but I basically, I just picked this up because it was only like 85 cents. I don't even know how much they go for brand new. Um, probably doesn't go for that much because the lodge stuff does tend to be a pretty good deal, especially for the fact that they're made in the USA. But if you look at this, I think this probably required a lot of um, machining or whatever to make, like all these holes and stuff. But you can see like one side is kind of like the finished side and this is the sort of unfinished side. I don't use this hardly that much, but it's nice to have. And then this piece back here is another lodge piece from their current lineup. 
Um, this is a Lodge number two, it says USA 90G. And as you can see, it's just kind of a skillet, a flat skillet. And I got this one because in terms of Lodge, it's one of the lighter, you know, Lodge units because it's not a full pan. And I actually use this more than I thought I would when I first got it. I thought I was just gonna use it like to do pancakes and things like that, but it turns out if I'm making a grilled cheese sandwich or something like that, I use this quite often. One of the things that's nice about it is you can get your spatula under there uh, easier and flip things, where because you don't have a wall here, you know, so it's just easier to just you know flip things like with the spatula, like if you're doing a sandwich or something like that. Of course, it's perfect for doing pancakes and all, and and just heating things up and stuff like that. So this one actually really does get a lot of use. And actually, um, if you're only going to get one lodge, I would probably recommend getting one of these. Um, you would actually be surprised how often or how much you use it. They also make a larger one. Um, this is, I believe, 10 inches, but they also make a larger 12 inch model. On it. Now, one of the things about the current available lodge cast iron pans is that the surface is not really polished or finished. Um, they tend to be more rough than, you know, like the vintage ones. Like you, if I can show these two, I can compare, you can kind of compare the sur two surfaces here. The one on the right is the lodge. You can kind of see the texture, how rough it is here. Whereas the Griswold is really super shiny and smooth, right? So that's one of the differences. The lodge ones can be a little bit harder to cook with for that reason. But once you get it built up with a lot of seasoning, like the more and more you use it, I think the smoother and smoother that they will get over time. Um, so that's a minor issue, but it is something to be aware of. It's the lodge ones are not gonna be as nonstick, um, you know, like right out of the box. And then as I mentioned, I've got a couple of lodge scrapers here. Um, this one is for the ridged pan and this one is for the flat pan. So this helps just to scrape things off. Like, you know, if you're, after you're done cooking and you've got stuff um, like still like stuck on there, um, you can just use these to scrape it as you're, as you're washing it. Um, and you know, get into the little edges as well. So these are definitely quite useful and I'll post a link to these as well. I have a large scrub brush and I haven't even used this one yet. This one is brand new um, just because I have another one that uh, I'm using first. This one is just the extra one. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a nice uh, scrub brush for cleaning the uh, large pans and it's got um, relatively soft bristles that aren't going to like scratch it or anything like that. And then these things are, I think are a must have. These are made by Lodge as well, and they're just handle pads. But why I say that these are a must have is because the handles tend to get really hot when you're cooking. So what you do is you just put these right on the handle like that as you're cooking. And then as you're cooking, if you need to move the pot or whatever, you can still grab it and not burn yourself. Um, so these are definitely something that I use very often. And it's just good to have, just put it on there while you're cooking and uh, you're not as, in fear of burning yourself. And then the last thing is this. It looks like a deodorant stick or something like that, but it's actually a cast ironing seasoning stick. Now there are several different companies that make seasoning for cast iron and this is just one of them. But as you open this here, it's, you can see it's kind of looking like deodorant, right? Of course, this actually is not deodorant. It is actually a mixture of beeswax and other oil. And what you do with this is after your cast iron is cleaned, you've brushed it out and rinsed it, you put it back on the stove, wipe it so it's dry, and as it's on the stove with low heat, with low to medium heat, you just kind of swipe this on the cast iron and then wipe it around and it kind of spreads around the cast iron and seasoning, seasons it a little bit. Um, so this thing is pretty useful. I use this um, fairly regularly, but again, there are other brands of this and you can also use something like Crisco or even olive oil, you know, in between cookings just to sort of season your pan. And then, and then in looking at some of these, um, like this one, for instance, can probably use, you know, use some oil on it. You can kind of see it's kind of dry on the bottom surface. Ideally, there should probably be a little bit more coating of, of seasoning here or, or at least some oil um, on the bottom surface. But again, these are all user pieces. Um, these aren't like collectibles. Yeah. So, so they may not look as nice as some, that, some people that show off their collectible pieces. Again, I use each and every one of these very regularly and they really work well for me. Um, you know, some of these pieces in here, I don't necessarily have to have like the trivet here or maybe the weighted push thing there. But all the other pans I think are kind of like must haves, at least in my kitchen. Now I do have some other pans, like if I'm boiling pasta or something like that, I do have a stainless steel stock pot, you know, for things like that. Um, so I do have some stainless pans and I also have some aluminum clad pans and stuff like that in my kitchen. But I have to say my first choice when I reach for any cookware is going to be one of these pieces. And then I also have a stainless steel frying pan as well. And those stainless steel pieces are really good if you're making something like with tomatoes in it because cast iron and tomatoes don't really do real well. They kind of react. 
the tomato kind of reacts when you're cooking in cast iron and kind of will lift off some of the cast iron seasoning. Um, so, you know, the stainless steel pieces do have a place uh, in my kitchen, but for the most part, I reach for the cast iron most of the time. So thanks for watching this video. And as always for community and discussion, um, please leave a comment in the comments field. And if you are able to identify any of the vintage Griswold pieces in terms of the year that they were made, you know, if you're an expert on cast iron or anything like that, I would appreciate you leaving a comment and letting me know. In terms of the vintage ones, I, I have pretty much everything I think I would need. And that was my whole point in getting them. I have a six, an eight, and a 10 size in the vintage Griswolds. And you know, if you took everything else away and just gave me the six, eight, and 10 Griswolds, I would be able to survive just fine with three cast iron pieces. So in some ways, the other pieces, the other lodge pieces in this collection uh, may be kind of like extras, but again, they all get uh, quite a bit of use in my kitchen. So thanks again for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.